Action! Activate! It's me, Gazbot. I'm just looking at comics. Oh, wait. Who's with me? What is happening? This is Action Activate, and with me... It is I, the big dog. Blue Ranger power! All the Rangers and the Turtles and everybody power! We are here to talk about uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Ninja Turtles 2, number 4. 4 out of 5. We're getting there. I uh, Unintentionally or intentionally, depending on which version you would prefer to believe, um, am matching... The cover I have for ah, issue four, by wearing blue. Sure. Um, I, I have no. I mean, I have Godzilla, and that kind of looks like the the dragon Tommy mutant kind of ish. Yeah. Ish um, at best. I you had talked about this uh, having an alternate cover with uh, sort of like an old school Sentai board book look, which I would have preferred to get, but I did not see it at the two comic stores I went to, and of the choices that were available. I went with this one, which is, I believe this is the... Cover um, A. Yeah. Wait, what'd you say? Cover A. Well, cover A, yeah, but I was blanking on the, the artist's name. Um, Dan Mora. Dan Mora, yeah. So when in doubt, i go Dan Mora. Um, it's fair. The... I like it. Yes. <laughs> what do you think? I, I agree. I think... Um, I would argue that this was the weakest issue out of all of them, but I still enjoyed it. And this has just been a very fun series overall. I feel like you said something similar for issue three, to be honest. Well, I About think the weakest, out, of the, gates, out yeah. of the gates, it came out so strong. I think we mm -hmm. were on such a high that it was just like, okay, let me, I'm going to jump ahead. And there's obviously spoilers. If you have, yes. I'm going to jump way ahead because what about this part? No, that's great. Because you're like, they're just kind of doing whatever. I'm like, that was, that was Well, unexpected. last issue, we got them to morph into the Ninja Mutant Rangers. Great. Well, okay. I I guess the thing is, arguably that's better and cooler and more innovative. But unfortunately, just about anybody that had any interest in this book found that out before the book came out. So unfortunately, that's that was ruined. And even if somehow it wasn't ruined, once that happened, I'm like, oh, well, that's the new thing. So when and they made a point of saying, well, he has the X morpher and the others are destroyed and stuff. So when that happened, yes, them turning into mutants was more dynamic and more exciting. And and but like I I honestly didn't expect the turtles to get rangered up in a non-mighty morphin ranger mode. And I thought that was cool. I like that. I think it's cool. I think you have a more of an affinity to the Ranger X powers than I do, or look per se. Like I enjoy that page. But between the two of us, you enjoy it more, and I think I enjoy the mutants more than you do. I don't know. You know what? I, I may enjoy the mutant X, uh, the what are the power extreme, which I don't. It's so nineties. The power extreme. If it wasn't the Ninja Turtles, I'd be like that's stupid. But it's like okay, well, you know, fine. Um, I do like that look for sure, and maybe I like it more than you. Um, but no, I do. I do like the mutant Power Rangers. I feel like you don't like them. <laughs> All you've done for the last two minutes is defend them. <laughs> All right. En enough enough antics about this. Let's dive into the story. So we're starting out right out of the gates. The Rangers and or the Rangers, the Turtles and Shredder are in Dimension X. I love the way they render Dimension Dimension X. Um, yes. I'm trying to think when I've seen it because it's not really something that you saw in the comics, in the, the old school comics. It's something that was didn't, kind of you, didn't they get transported with Fugitoid like right out of the gate? That wasn't. I don't remember if it was called. They went to another dimension, or was it? I thought it was just space. They went I thought, somewhere. I think it's I Dimension X. I'm reading that now, and from what I recall, but it wasn't Dimension X the way it was in the com uh, the cartoon where Correct. Krang is the ruler and it's conquered whatever. So that's kind of the point I'm making. And so other than the cartoon, I don't remember seeing, and I haven't been reading the comics and keeping up, but in the cartoon, it was just sort of like, hey, there's a bunch of rock soldiers and there's a hot rod and teenagers. I like this version of it where it's like, oh yeah, he conquered everything. And so everything's just sort of like 
a wasteland. It's not like yep. there's a store people are very, going to. Uh, it's very outside of Corinth vibes. Yes. And and they even they're making their jokes and Shredder's like, this is what our world is gonna look like. You realize yeah. that? Like, this this is why I would team up with you because because we have different ideas of what justice and order and honor are, but neither of us want to live in a fiery desert. You know, like yeah, because they're like, Why do you always want to destroy the world? He's like, I don't want to destroy it, I want to conquer it. Yeah, huge difference. Yeah, I love their I love how they have them like walking down these like girders and stuff. Just yeah. very I really like everything about the way this is the very atmospheric. Very good. Then we flash back to Angel Grove. Um, and I love how Splinter's literally teaching them as they go, like how to be mutants. Me too. I love it so much. Yeah, you know what? I don't think this is the weakest one of the series. I, I disagree with you. I don't think it's necessarily the best, but I don't think it's the weakest. Do you think la issue three was weaker than four, is what you're saying? Um, I'm gonna provisionally say that. I'd have to go back and kind of like double check myself, but I enjoyed this issue enough. So here's the thing that I want to clarify for anybody like you guys are just being negative. Me what? saying no. it is the weakest is saying the weakest story so far is like a B plus. Yeah, if the I, weakest I, thing is a B plus, everything else is exceptional. There the has most, to be yeah, different it's all, levels. It's all, it's all relative, obviously. It's all great. Yeah. It's yeah. the same as like when it's kind of the inverse is true. If you're like, um, these this is these are all terrible, but this is the best of the bad. It's like these are all great, but this is the worst of the good. Correct. Like, yeah. Um, I, I, I agree with you that I love how Splinter's teaching them and I love the art. You know, it's funny because I remember there was a page or two of a big fight scene. I think it might've been issue two or three. And I'm like, the art just isn't as good for some reason. And like, I've kind of had the inverse where I'm like, there's this huge fight scene. Everything's rendered great. The action's great. Splinter's doing this awesome, like attack. Like, oh, I think it was the breakout of like Baxter Stockman that you didn't like where it was all that, that was about the flow of action, not being clear. But that's a lot more forgivable, like whatever. People make mistakes of storytelling, and maybe other people it's clear too. It's that's a little bit more subjective. But no, it was Dan Mora, who I think is a fantastic artist and who renders things great. There were some in some of the big fight scenes, there were just some characters that looked like they were unfinished. Either yeah. either by choice, by design, or by circumstance. But oh, I, I think know. I know what you're talking about. It might have yeah. been two or three. But I'm not seeing that in these fight scenes, is my point. During this fight, I love how um Leatherhead and Tommy have like really good reptile banter. Yes. That part's good. And then switching gears a little bit from like joyous fun to like kind of being able to be serious. We see Bulk and Skull get captured and they're like on the verge of being killed. Yeah. Like but <laughs> it feels like I know they're probably not, but it feels like, like very serious. It's like why wouldn't they be killed? <laughs> like, yes. like by these people, they're they're of no use to them theoretically. But yeah. They basically find a connection with their kind of powerful counterparts in the other world of like, hey, you guys are kind of idiots. We're kind of idiots. Yeah. You know? Hey, Bebop Roxo, you guys, you guys will be the the stars of our show if you don't murder us right now. Did you notice? Maybe you did, but okay. So they're talking to him, and these are like the comic. He's got like this cyborg arm, and they're like, you know, yeah. whatever. And then he frames them, and all of a sudden they look like the '90s cartoons versions. I See didn't that? notice that, but that's awesome. Yeah, that's got to be on purpose. I you thought that was a really point for you. Oh, yeah. So it's like, yeah, look at you on TV. And it's like, then they look like they did on TV. I thought that was really cool. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, the upgrades that they have are cool. The dynamic between Krang and Rita are cool. Talking about, like, you know, getting ready for the Zords, how they're going to, like, trying to stay two or three steps ahead of this the Rita turtle. A lot too. Um, also, the part that, that stinks is like, the big reveal, I think it was the last issue. Casey's like, I'm really playing both sides. And Rita's yeah. like, You're a dingus if you thought we ever thought you were loyal to us at all. I that's a bummer for the characters in the book, but I yeah. like it as writing. Because like there's no, no, no. I do I as well. Know. Yeah. I because it makes sense. Because like, how could Casey and I love Casey, but he's not known for being smart. How is Casey fooling all these other people? And yeah, but uh, but when when that happens and she attacks him and everything, mm -hmm. um, his suit right here, how yeah, it gets smashed and his hair yeah. sticks out the top. Yeah. We in the beginning, we both were kind of like, This is not my favorite suit, and it doesn't represent Casey enough. And then the second or third issue or whatever show up is like, okay, the design got a little refined. Once she smashed him up, I'm like, that's the suit. That <laughs> smashed up hair sticking out. That's the Casey suit. That's what it should have looked like all along. It's very episode two Padme, where it's like, you just needed to not have this formal garb and be battle ready, and I liked you better. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. 
Um, um, also yeah. showing how powerful Rita is. She's just getting that, you know, telekinesis magic grip on him. And yeah. again, just the stakes feel high and important as opposed well, to yeah, like, especially because their big plan, she knows all about it. And yeah. she theoretically is killing their inside agent. Although we, we know he probably won't be killed, but like theoretically. Yeah. This is one of those times where again, it, it just feels like, Instead of it just being like, oh, what's going to happen? Is the world going to be saved? It'll probably be saved, but it feels more, you know, right. closer on we the edge lose than normal. people along the way. Is it going to maybe we lose a city, but the world is saved? Yeah. Um, and um, then Turtles back in, or I guess all of us are in Dimension X now. Um, finding these morphers. Of course, they're color coded for the turtles. Hope I'm my hope. And they're broken. Is in issue five. There's some kind of explanation about why the colors are matching to the turtles, a fifth ranger, whatever. But like, I'm hoping it's a thing where like, oh, these rangers were inspired by the turtles. Time works differently. Time why some reason why it's like not just hyper convenient. Here's, and I think that would be awesome. Here's what I want. I don't want that. I'm fine with no explanation whatsoever. It's a coincidence. Fine, whatever. However, if they get to do a third book like they talked about, then you can dive into that. That could be something that gets explained, but I don't think because here's why. Because there's only one issue left of this, and I'm already worried that there's not enough issue. Like, like we're running out of track here. You know, I, I think I would like two more issues based on where we are at the end of this. So I don't want an ex I don't want two pages explaining why they're that color. I don't want that. So we're breaking uh Karai out of the prison. Um, and this shot on the next page with all of the monsters mm -hmm. is so great. Um, I do like how these specific monsters were picked, I think because Dan Mora was like, so I had to draw all these already for, uh, the board game. Is it cool if I just, you know, go with what I'm comfortable with instead of trying to find new season one villains? And they're like, yeah, do it. Do you Dan Mora? I, I also thought with maybe like one or two exceptions, these are just like the popular mainstream. If you know any monsters, these are like, you know, not all of them, but I mean, like. I mean, 75% of these are the main monsters. Outside of the henchmen of Rita, mm -hmm. Pudgy Pig, I agree. Pumpkin Rapper. Pumpkin Rapper. The, and then the, the other three, or the, the other Mr. four, absolutely not. That's uh, something Bones. Yeah, I want to say Mr. Bones. Or, but yeah, he's he's pretty well known. Uh, well, here's the thing. I always say well known. Like if they had a figure of this monster in the first year or so the show was out, most people know them. Because they also had a sticker and a color form. Madam Woe, not – that is a deep cut. No, no, Madam Woe, uh, like, yeah. I'm saying 75 for – Eye Guy, they got Eye Guy. So I'm saying 75% um, of the ones. Yeah, Frog, I, I remember it fondly. But uh, again, never had a figure. The frog and like Madam Woe are the two outliers. The and rest the Bones Guy. No, everybody knows the Bones guy. I, I disagree. If you did or did not think the Bones guy was a main person, yes. comment, comment down now, below. Obviously, a lot of these are monsters of the week, so we don't mean it that way, but a main, like, a popular, well-known villain from the early days. Um, and, and we get a to lot see of well-known is because of the merchandising. Yeah. Say? I said a lot of good fighting here. Really yes. enjoying it. A lot of good fighting, and I like uh, – I love villains turning good. But I also love villains who don't turn good, but reveal the depth of their character like, like a Magneto. And this is, again, Shredder's like, I think I could run the world better. I have all these ideas. I don't want it to be destroyed, so I'll do what it takes. And then here, he's like, okay, Karai, you go and get rally the Foot Clan, save the planet. I'm going to stay here and sacrifice myself because as much as he has an ego and everything else, he's like, it's worth me dying to save the planet. So it's like, it's just like, yeah, it's like adding a layer of nuance and like, yeah. you know, integrity. He he has his own code of conduct and he lives by that. And I always find that respectful. Even if they're evil, even if I don't like him, it's like, well, okay, yeah. you're, you're, you're doing what you think is right up to the end and you're willing to sacrifice. Yourself. So I, I love when stuff like that happens. Um, the interesting thing, uh, again, going to explanations is they have these morphers and then they're like, they're glowing, mm -hmm. which is inherently fixing them. Um, through the power of, uh, because I said so. Um, I think, I think there was a theory that Donnie had at some point about like, did they make that up or did Donnie say something about like the, the mutation they had or some background radiation or something about them being mutants somehow helped. Um, oh, okay. The science answer, this is what Donnie says. The proximity of power nodes somehow reestablished the dormant morphers connection to the grid. But the cool answer is, we're, yeah, so he, he kind of gives like a half-ass sort of explanation, but like who knows, it's cool. That is enough. 
He's like, I think maybe this, but whatever, which is, I mean, that's what we would say in that situation. That, that team shot right there does look great though. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I have no problem. And I also like that. They're like, I don't even know what these weapons are, but they're cool. Like, yeah, I think, uh, it looks like Mikey has like some kind of futuristic, like Kusari Gama. Mm -hmm. There's swords. There's a uh, the thing that looks like the, from, uh, Halo. Halo. It looks yeah. exactly like the energy swords from Halo, which I think are awesome. But it's close enough to a sigh and like, and they yeah. had in, in the, the, the recent semi-recent CGI show on Nickelodeon, they had like a space storyline of space figures where they had kind of the similar thing where they're kind of like energy space versions of their weapons. Mm -hmm. I have no issue with that. Honestly, if the weapons were completely different, that'd be fine too. So the fact yeah. that they're kind of matching somewhat, that's great. Um, we get the interview with Bulk and Skull. We go back to Angel Grove. Everybody's getting ready. And then big reveal at the end, which, uh, is setting up nicely for uh, the next issue is uh Krang Megazord. Krang Megazord. And uh, I'm guessing he's like, it, it because he's normally small, it, but, but they show them looking up. So it's clear that he's used like the size thing that makes him get bigger too. Like he did in the show. I, I feel like Rita just did a make my Krang grow. And there he is. Maybe. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, in the show, there was a, ch a specific chip he had in the early episodes that could make the robot and himself grow. But either way, there are two mechanisms by which he could have gotten gigantic. Again, um, this shot is so great because Dan Mora is the best. Yeah. And I like at a glance, it looks like, oh, it's the Dino Megazord with him in the chest. But if you really look at it, it's like, no, the arms are a little bit wonky and there's yeah. some other stuff going on and the eyes are a little more evil. Like it's not exactly, which is nice. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Overall, good yeah. issue. Like solid. Again, the series is great. Mm -hmm. I think eventually when it comes collected, I think people will really enjoy reading it in one sitting or close to one sitting, you know? Yes. Um, I agree. Um, I so already issue five came out this week. Yes. Um, I already bought it, but didn't read it because I didn't want to pollute my thoughts on it. Um, do, can I do a quick sneak? Having not read it, just showing the cover of the one I bought. Sure. Okay. This is the one I bought again. It's, Oh, it's in the thing. It's again, it's the Dan Mora art, which, you know, out of the choice they had, this is the one. Now here's the one thing I will say. Look at Casey. Yeah. That is a Casey Ranger. That's my Casey Ranger. That's what I wanted all along. And you know what? They knew where they're going. It wasn't like, well, this is 10 years later, a different artist. So they said, let's start them off this way. So that we get, so anything I said about the earlier design, forget it. This is the Casey Ranger. It's great. Perfect. I can't wait to read this. So I can't show obviously, but the fifth uh, cover from the cover line I have is the Casey Ranger helmet. Is it broken or unbroken? Unbroken. Oh yeah, they had one at that stat, the one at the store, but I'm not collecting those. So I was like, yeah, this is that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm again excited that a there was the set. B that like I, I'm hoping Ryan Parrot had something to do with this. Where a lot of times for these kind of um, covers, you, they're usually gated in some way, meaning like they're a one in ten variant, they're a right. one in twenty five variant, or whatever. So like they would be more expensive. No, this is just regular cover if you want yeah. the turtle one like you got great if you want the helmet one great it's flat and i think that's so awesome considering so many comic ranger fans like myself already have a helmet collection of covers where Absolutely. it's like why would i punish you why would i cash grab read my story thanks for coming i 100 percent agree and as someone who would prefer the non-helmet version not that i think they're bad but i'm just i'm not collecting them if i couldn't get my preferred version and i got stuck with a helmet one okay fine whatever you know what i mean like uh, this is not the end of the world and if i really cared i could go hunt this one down you know but like yeah. yeah like you said it's not like they're hard to get or extra expensive and you know so yeah. yeah um yeah i i think this was great and i look forward to the next one my only worry is i, I hope they could wrap it up I, here's what i kind of expect that they'll mostly wrap it up kind of like at the end of the first one where then then they'll have like a little like oh but also this which is what they did at the end of the first story yeah and then hope that yeah and if and if it, if in the third story they want to go into like why these powers worked and they were there, fine that could be the whole first issue but i don't want to take up a lot of time in the next issue of this yeah one. the one thing i will say and i don't know if i'll read these but for those that like turtles and turtle crossovers i've learned that it was either announced or they're coming out now of ninja turtles stranger things oh that is not well they have figures of that no no, no a comic oh okay i had not heard of that that okay yeah, which I'm like cautiously optimistic. And then the other one that also 
kind of makes sense and kind of doesn't is Ninja Turtles Street Fighter. Kind of makes sense and kind of doesn't. The one I was thinking of actually was Ninja Turtles He-Man, mm. which is, I guess, a comic. Freddie Williams III, who's done a lot of these crossovers. Yeah. He um he has a page where he has his art up whatever, and there's a lot of original art you could buy of his Ninja Turtle Master of the Universe crossover art, which uh, I don't have a link for it, but check it out. Freddie Williams III. Uh, it's really cool stuff. He's not... He's a good artist. He's not one of my favorites. He's not like Dan Murphy, but this stuff, I like his concept and the ideas he had, and, and the, but I guess that book never happened. But it's maybe could still happen. And there's people I watch for toys that are specifically into like Masterverse and Origins and all the current He-Man lines. And they're saying that there's a leak slash rumor that there's going to be Ninja Turtle He-Man figures coming out. And if that happens, they might bring the comic back and, you know, what? I feel like you would get those. I there, are, yeah, probably. I, I, I would probably <laughs> thank try you for them. not beating around the bush. <laughs> Be like, no, 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 no. You know what? Because because I was gonna say, well, maybe I don't know. I'd see what they look like. I mean, if they were terrible, I wouldn't. But the the artwork has specifically. Um, there's Leonardo with like the He Man bandolier and like the loincloth, and it works. It doesn't look stupid at all. It's like, oh yeah. And then there's another one with like Roboto and Metalhead, and so like. Just based on that, I'm like, well, that's three I want right there. So, uh, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But we're not here to talk about toys. We're here to talk about these comics. This has been Action Activate's review of issue four. Wait for issue five whenever we get around to it. Until then, I am the big dog. I am Gazbot. And, and to the power. hook <laughs>it's been a while since I watched Watch that. Watch Show There you go. Yeah, I'm going to end this recording. And done. I wish it wouldn't tell you that it wasn't done. I know. It's still going. So it's.